Okay, cool. So this is the uh, the first interview that I'm doing based on locking here with uh, locksmith Henrik from Denmark. And um, before we started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about kind of how we linked up and the connection between um, yourself and, and me and my group out here in D.C. Basically, Junius Brickhouse, uh, the guy who started Urban Artistry here and and leader of the Assassin's Crew DC. Uh, he spent time in Germany in the military and he met Thomas from Out of Control. And um, I believe, did he meet you during the time he was out there? Did you meet him at that time? Yeah, he came, he came by, I was living in France uh, from 2000 and until 2005, I think. And he came down for uh, just a boot and stayed with me. Ah, uh, okay. And that's where I, I think I met him. Yeah, I met him first time. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. And, uh, that that was, it was it was a great experience. Just good people. You yeah. Know? So we uh, we went to that event and uh, he actually asked me if I wanted to uh, compete in the house. <laughs> but, nice. <laughs> and I just. I very uh, I was I was not ready for it, so I said no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but anyway, like you guys, you guys met then. Like he came back here to DC, two thousand five. He started Assassin's Chapter out here, and he was always talking about you guys. He was talking about you, Thomas, Steen, Damon, um, and basically in two thousand ten, we had the Soul Society out here called the family affair where we were like let's let's get all these people together that are linked in movement you know and and me myself and Rashad we hadn't met you guys yet but I think it was really then in 2010 that was our first time that we we got together um after that Steen brought me and Rashad out for for theater work in Denmark and this is really where he started showing us the the London style locking and we started diving more into that and we were also linking up with with you a lot and you were showing us a ton of stuff for the London style so before we started the interview I just wanted to say you know like the style the reason why I'm interviewing you is because you're connected to to me and my group in sort of movement lineage and the style of locking that I do is heavily influenced by you Steen, Anthony, and Damon. So I figured, you know, we can we can talk a little bit about, you know, your story and then break down what London locking is for people that maybe don't know. Um, so, so would you mind for people that don't know, just introduce yourself, where you're from, when you started dancing, some basics? Sure. Um, my name is Henrik Locksmith Christensen. I'm from 1973, and I grew up in Denmark. Uh, in 1994, I started to become a part of Out of Control, and was a part of Out of Control up until the start of 2000, where I moved out to France. Um, but before that, already in, I think it was in 1989, I saw Lockin for the first time. I saw it on MTV with uh, Janet Jackson that did the song All Right. So she did this, this whole like Lockin theme with uh, Cap mm. Calloway walking by. And mm. Then uh, I saw uh, I saw Anthony. Uh, Anthony is like my main source to Lockin. Uh, real, real, real natural, a real charismatic and phenomenal dancer. And um, him and a few people from London did something to Lockin that uh, changed it a bit, uh, that changed the dynamic of it. It didn't, to me, look so dated. Mm. It looked like something from the future, mm. uh, something I never seen seen before. I was very excited when I saw it. Uh, there's a guy called Mark Dias Johnson. Mm. There's a guy called Danny Francis, and then Anthony, and there's a guy called Jimmy Williams. Um, Anthony was around two other dancers called Dave Belgrave and Warren Crooks. 
and Bill Day Brave and Warren Crooks were both a part of Out of Control together with Thomas and Steen, I think, uh, back in the 80s. Um, and they kind of had a breakthrough with this very uh, popular TV show that was going on every Saturday, I think, where they were kind of the house dancers of the right, show. Right, right. So they did these gigs and... Being a kid, growing up, being excited about dance, that we, we live for that. Me and a guy called uh, Kaiser, actually. Right. Um, and we formed our own little group called System of Survival hmm. and emulated what we saw uh, out of control doing, you know, trying to do our own thing as well. Hmm. And it was not available to us. So we had to work hard and uh, <laughs> go out to these happenings, go out to the, the clubs and see the show and and whatnot so and it was so funny like when you saw something on the tv you were just like super focused and then it would be gone like as soon as it was done right you're like oh and i did not have a recorder or anything like that so yeah that's that's kind of how it started i think in what happened to me personally with Logan Mm -hmm. is in 2000 i left it and the reasons why I left it is because a kind of a, a, a wave of the original style flooded the world, the dance world. Mm. And uh, there was money to be made by the people who uh, came out with this style mm. or were connected to the original lockers. So they kind of went out and this is how it is. This is how you right. do it. And all of a sudden, everybody danced the same. Mm. Um, this uh, individual uh, style that is coming back now, actually. Uh, right. I see it happening now, which is great. Uh, just kind of just vanished because everybody wanted to do it right. Everybody mm. wanted to do it correctly. But it was very far from the way that I I had learned it. Right. You know, so I lost interest and then I, I, I got interested in house dance. Right, right. So I did that. Uh, I was very intrigued by house dance already in 96 when I went to New York the first time um, and saw it on this club called Vinyl. So I was like, okay, let me grab onto that. And that kind of kept me, you know, right. uh, dancing, you know. But I, then here in this year, actually, I entered the Just a Boo uh, lock in yeah. with a. Uh, with one of my uh, former students called Lofty, and we won for the Scandinavian uh, part, and we went to Paris, lost our first round against India, but yet again, uh, since we're doing something that's very different, it also needs time to be accepted. And I think the important part of going there and do it was uh, to show something different. Right. So, So... You said that like when some of the American teachers came over and the majority of people in Europe felt like, oh, I have to learn this the right way or the real way, that's when everybody, well, would you say that's when sort of the London style or the European style of locking started dying down? And what, what, um, like what years do you remember people doing like an original London or European style before that happened? Like when did people come and then when did people? When did it start changing? Around what time? Um, I, what I personally think happened is, um, you know, all this was big. This style, well, it was big here. Let, let me put it like that. It was a local phenomenon in England and in Denmark because yeah. those really great dancers from England came here yeah. and did something. So I never seen everybody, anybody do it since. There was just us, mm. and there was no internet. So uh, to expose this to the world was not really uh, as easy as it is today. Right. With the internet, you know. So I don't think a lot of people know of it. Yeah. We did. We did a few things. We did like Battle of the Year was a turning point. Nineteen ninety five. Me, Steen, Thomas, Speedy, Tron, Kenneth. Uh, we went and we won against Flying Steps. Right. And that really got a lot of attention. Yeah. And we also did a TV show uh, called Viva that Storm was running. Right. And and he, so, so it, like everybody 
boom, it got big in Germany, real big in Germany. Mm. And then from 95 up until 2000, we had opportunities to go and do uh, theater shows in France. Oh, okay. So we went to France as well, and that was also, we had great success in France. They really loved us out there. Uh, I know that Storm was really influenced by our style. He was right. very inspired and also took a lot of uh, our, you know, techniques and flavors and co incorporated it into his own thing, of course, eventually. Right. But, uh, but you know, he was one of the people that was really intrigued by the style and around and, um, and did, you know, not only break in, but pop right. and lock in. So, so I think uh, when, when I stopped... I didn't stop, but when I didn't, when I lost my focus on locking in 2000, um, it was like everybody was just dancing like the original yeah. lockers. Um, a question about Battle of the Year, like when I look back at that footage, and both those clips you mentioned, the, the TV show and the Battle of the Year, that's on YouTube, so people can find that. But when I look back at that, I, I almost don't see any other crews that had lockers and poppers like maybe a lot of b-boy crews back then had like one popper right and then maybe they i don't know i i feel like were you guys one of the first crews that was sort of like an all styles crew like that kind of birthed this whole movement of all styles crew or do you feel like it was a common thing back then or is you know is that why you guys were so different and and did so well because you had so many styles it was it was definitely not the norm yeah uh, I think we were one of the few crews who could do everything. Uh, we only had one breaker, which were Wildcat. Yeah. Um, and um, and then and, and Warren and him did a lot of things. Warren was able to break as well, and he was a was a well-rounded dancer. He could do pop and lock and then breaking and capoeira. Um, so they did stuff together. Uh, but yeah, it, it wasn't the norm. I yeah. think popping was. Uh, it was like locking was not really right. something that, yeah. uh, and and it's also to be honest, it's a sophisticated style. Mm. It's like to make locking look good, it takes a lot of work and effort. I mm. mean, you know that. Mm, so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so it's just not, and also I, I I think there was just not a lot of information available. You know, there was a few tapes and a, and a few people had these uh, tape. Uh, VH, uh, you know, videotapes, right? Um, and it, it was well kept secrets. I mean, people was holding on to these tapes like, you know, something from the <laughs> Pentagon, right? Right. <laughs> and they were not about to, to share that uh, with just anybody. And yeah. Steen was lucky to, uh, you know, get a few tapes from people, right? And that was what we 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 watched and uh, learned from. Actually, there was I was just. Uh, type in uh, Rashad uh, last night because mm. there's a video that went viral with locking that I have I haven't seen since then that I saw on a tape that Steen had with these two really energetic uh, lockers oh, that yeah. jumped around doing saltos yep. and Same and it. that was kind of what me and Steen was aiming for. We were practicing four hours a day. Mm. every day mm. you know so we became really tight in uh, in what we did you know yeah so yeah. let's let's dig a little bit into to London locking and tell people like a little bit more about it I guess yeah. from from your perspective like how would you explain what London locking is and what separates it from like the original way or the LA style okay I think with what I see is that it's very dynamic, uh, locking is in general, but the London style, uh, I think personally, it's big, mm. it's dynamic, there's a lot of misdirection, mm. uh, multiple things are happening at once. Mm. Uh, there's different techniques, even as how to do the up-down lock, it's mm. done differently. Uh, a lot of things are, are moved from the elbows, First, you move up the elbow, and then the right. arms come first. The angles are different. It's very clean. Um, it's very hard. It's very hard to explain in words. You know, I mean, I, I feel that you have to see it next mm. to each other 
right uh, to truly understand the difference is it what about um like the clothing i feel like that's a huge difference or or yeah. it generalizing yeah. but it seems like that's a big difference too it's 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 not so much also about like look how funky I can be look how happy I can be mm. it's a very cool on top uh, slick way mm. uh, to to move uh, compared to the original style which is uh, more of a, a happy guy uh, a joking character where our character is more like a a really slick pickpocket from the 50s hmm. uh, or uh, a superhero for that matter mm. you know so I mean that's and that's that's the feel I got when I saw this the first time it looked like Spider-Man doing a lock and so <laughs> you know it really looked like something out of this world yeah uh, and that was Anthony when I saw him do this I was just like it was one of the most amazing things I've seen in my life, and I just really want wanted to to move like that. Right. And I haven't seen that since, to be honest with you. You know, and it's not to put anybody down out there. You know, there's yeah. there's thousands of amazing great dancers, but uh, there's just something different to that. You know, and I don't know if it's because when you you're young, uh, you're more perceptive to what happening around you, and then when you get mm. older, you look back on that. That was the, mm. but to be honest, like honestly, I I think no, I haven't seen anybody better. Yeah. Who um, who are some of the other like? Well, you mentioned like Diaz and Danny Francis. Would you um, is would you say they all had slightly different styles as well? Even though it was the London approach, like were they known it, for different things? Those some of those guys. Danny Francis is also a popper, but. I remember when I saw him the first time, he did things that just really reminded me of Anthony. I was mm. like, wow, there's there's one more, you know. Mm. Um, with with Anthony, it's just like he had this amazing time and, mm. and all his uh, his choice of postures or movement just looked like he's on the go. He's ready to go. You know, it just yeah. looks like. Um, and Danny Francis... Um, He's also a papa. Yeah. He's also a papa. Uh, but he, he's, he got like an amazing, like really, really soft, nice control with uh, Mark Dias. Uh, I never met Mark Dias in real life. Yeah, yeah, actually I did, but real brief, like yeah. just a hello. Uh, but he's a powerhouse. Like he's like a, um, like his physique is just crazy. He's uh, really, really strong. And mentally strong. I heard stories about this guy who could just sit down for the entire evening in a club and just be sitting still. And all of a sudden, he would just run up the wall, do a flip, and land into a split or slide up right on the table in a split and come up and do something. Um, I heard like he would step off a stage and fly backwards into the room into a split. You know, this guy's right. just like, yeah. So that was his thing. Um, and there's a funny story that I got where they they practiced and then everybody came to practice. Yeah. And uh, this is another thing that they did with the London style that I don't see anybody do. And it's not something I've been exposed to a lot myself, but they know how to work with props like mm. jackets, uh, knapsacks, hats. Well, you see it a lot with the hat. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people play with that. But with jackets and knapsacks and stuff like that. So they came to practice. And yeah. um, Dias, he got angry. He was like, you guys don't practice. <laughs> so he took off his jacket, like this like trench coat that went down to the thighs or something. He took it off here, jumped backwards through it, hit under it in a split, and slid it up and took it on like this. <laughs> went like, like this. And then he just left, and everybody was like, huh? <laughs> so, and i seen these things. i seen Anthony is able to do these things, um, and it just looks like, wow. It looks like a, a magic trick. When yeah. it's done, you know? um, I think that's also something that separates uh, them from you know, the original song. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's a lot of stories like that I've heard from you and from Damon, like different ones about Anthony and Dias and Danny Francis. Like these guys like seem so uh, like such characters. They just seem like Absolutely. such personalities, you know. It's, yeah. It's really fun to hear those stories. Um, I was also going to ask you, like, do you feel like things that were going on in London uh, influenced the style, like the culture of London? Like, I feel like there was like a jazz rock scene going on and maybe this had some influence. Were there, were there other things that were like influencing these guys in London? Yeah, absolutely. They had a scene called, they called it Boogie Yeah. And Boogie. In, um, in France, they called it jazz rock. That's right, yeah. And so underground jazz uh, scene, uh, a few people are carrying this on. I know there's a guy in France, there's John, that right. has uh, this, the Summer Dance Festival mm -hmm. and House Dance Festival. Yeah. He knows about this style. So, um, yeah. That had a huge influence on, on and, and I think because that style of dancing, what they also are very much into is like you're dressed really proper. Yeah. You know, you're dressed in a suit. Mm -hmm. Everything matches. You got the nice shoes. You got the, you know. Yeah. They 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 so like they look like gentlemen, you know. Yeah. With a lot of swagger, a lot of style, you know, and then I think that kind of you know, influenced. It's also when you go out in London, uh, people are really well dressed. Mm. It's like they don't go out in a t-shirt when they go mm. to a club. They, I mean, at least from when I was there, they really dress up for it. Right. So I think that's just a. I, I guess maybe certain clubs, and in places they don't. But to the places I went, it's like, yeah. And you bring a couple of girls. You have to. If you just come, guys, you're not gonna get into the club <laughs> stuff like that. You know? so, yeah. Oh, but but I, I definitely think that had a, a huge influence, and I know that that uh, Anthony been talking about this scene mm. also a lot. He's been talking about the jazz scene, the underground jazz scene, and how he snuck into clubs. Right. In, a, in an early age and uh, oh, okay. and got familiar with dance that way. I also remember on his like um, little bio that we did for Soul Society, he was talking about mixing some of his Caribbean heritage, like some of that, yeah. the his his roots from that, and maybe some of his rhythm or dancing from that went into his locking too. I'm not a hundred percent sure on it, but. Yeah, I, I don't know much about it, but the last time I had the, the privilege to to meet him and talk with him about Locke and he, he explained to me that he wanted to make every move count. Mm. He really wanted to make it like the best point or, you know, just really, really put it, put, put his everything in there. Mm. So, so he, yeah, and of course, you know, he got his his cultural background that is from the Caribbeans and I think since a very early age he, I mean or maybe always he's been a natural he's, he's, a, he's a real natural right right yeah yeah so basically so I, I, sorry go ahead no I was just gonna ask like if you could um, merge that into like talking about how Anthony uh, came to Denmark to, to be a part of Out of Control and and taught you guys the style. Um, yeah. So um, basically, yeah, just to let people know like how, how Out of Control and yourself like got the style and how they were, you know, they moved over there, right? For a while, those guys, from some of the guys. As from far London. as I know, yeah, they, they moved uh, in the 80s. I think they came, uh, there, there were a group called Split Second first before they got together with uh, Thomas and Steen, yeah. which had their group called Out of Control. Yeah. And I think they did a show together at some point and they were asking, oh, what's your, what's your name? And then somebody said Out of Control and then, then it was Out of Control. Mm. That's how that happened. <laughs> um, but, but I think, yeah, what was it? Warren and Anthony stayed in Denmark, okay. and Dave went back to London, and then it was uh, Steen, Anthony, Thomas, Kenneth, 
And um, am I missing somebody? Warren, Anthony, Steen, Kenny, Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Our people. So they they were dancing together for for quite a while, and then I know Thomas he moved out to to Germany. Yeah. But um, yeah, they. They, they did the, I mean, we were influenced by, by them, you know, I was influenced by them. I saw them do their thing and then, you know, I tried to, to do what they were doing. Yeah. I kind of lost track for a minute there. <laughs> no, it's all yeah. good. Uh, and, but when you were talking about how they, how they came here and... Yeah, what? like how, how they came, well, basically, like, I know, like, that Out of Control in general was heavily influenced by, like, Anthony and and the London style and like Damon more for the popping style, you know. Yeah. And I was just trying to <clears throat> gear it towards letting people know about how they actually came and and were a part of the group and like teaching some of those routines and and things like that. They um, they came first as a split second, and they had a, a manager called Dorman. And they were doing shows, I know, in Sweden mm. and in Denmark. And then somehow they linked up with with Steen and Thomas. And then they decided to become a group. And I think their breakthrough as a group really was that TV show back in 1989 called uh, Belen, mm. which was a, a, a local Danish program that ran on the Saturdays. Right, and from there on, they got a lot of attention, especially uh, I mean in Denmark, and um, they were just everybody knew who Out of Control was back then. Yeah, and then I don't know what happened. I think Anthony, I think in two thousand no in nineteen ninety three. They, they separated. I think Anthony, he went back to London and so did Warren. Yeah. And then in 1994, I became a part of Out of Control. I started to, to dance with Steen. And okay. then in 1995, we got to do Battle of the Year. Right. And then we got a whole lot of work again. Okay. That kind of, that's when Out of Control took flight internationally. Right, okay. Because we did that thing. So, and before it was more like they were really well known in in Denmark. Ah, uh, okay. And I think maybe they did a few things, you know, here and there. Right. But 90, 90, 1995 was the turning point. Ah, uh, okay. Really got a lot of exposure. Nice. And yeah. what would you say that, like, you guys, like, at that turning point and what you guys did with the locking style... Um, what would you say that you guys added to the style? And also, uh, personally, what are some of the things that you use with your locking to make it like personal for you? Uh, I definitely think that back then we had a huge influence, especially on, on Euro the European scene Yeah. throughout Germany and France, which were the places where uh, hip-hop dance was big. It was really big in, in Germany and France, and then up here in Scandinavia. Yeah. Um, and and Damon was also a, a huge influence to my personal development, and mm. still is. Yeah, yeah. But what I try to do now is uh, I, I try to stay in shape. This style <laughs> of of locking is it, it, you really need to be in shape. Yeah. To do it, um, I try to you know be clean. I try to. Uh, I'm, I'm focused on rhythms mm. and, and flow, mm. uh, and also thinking in you know in levels and dimensions and move with purpose, but also let go. You know because some of the greatest things happen sometimes when you just let go. Yeah. Um, and, and and truly connect with what I with what I hear. Also listen to different kinds of music. You know I think what one thing that could be better with uh, the lock-in scene and also the break-in scene is the, the change mm. of music, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's very stuck in one particular yeah. style of, of music. And, you yeah. know, I, I do understand that a certain tempo needs to be there. Right. But 
I think that could change. And I, I do see change. I do see uh, some of the best lockers out there or that, that is recognized that some of, some of the best lockers and are, are carrying the torch for that style are doing changes mm. and also moving to different type mm -hmm. of sounds, Yeah, which is really refreshing. And I think it's needed also for the idea that everything doesn't have to look the same and it will also give it will also give room for this style yeah. because a lot of people actually have an opinion about this style that that's not how you do it you know mm. it's that's not the right way so it's wrong you know right right and and that's just yeah, i think it's a, it's a, it's narrow minded and it's a little bit sad also right because then, but but now I see that it's changing, and the mm -hmm. fact that I did this thing in January, you know, I don't know if that was what happened, but before that, because I dance very different compared to everybody else, yeah. I have seen the change. Yeah. So I, I believe that every every action is you know has this ripple effect, you know. Yeah. So at least a, a couple of thousand people have seen these videos that that we did and. You know, it does something. I mean, who, whoever is curious about this, you know, there is footage online. There's uh, the Battle of the Year, 95. There's the Viva TV show. Uh, I have put out some videos. Um, there's not much footage of, of Anthony out there, if any. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, that's at least that's something, you know. So And then I know you guys is also... Uh, a really good example of what this style is. You have done something you put out there, you know. So, um, and hopefully, like, I plan to put more, um, I plan to do more videos. Yeah. Put them out. And we got this, and we'll have this coming out. So hopefully people will yeah. spark some interest, you know, hearing all, all the history and your story and what you're doing with Locking now. Like, it's still, it's still here, you know, like the yeah. the London style and the Danish style. Or whatever you want to call it, like we're we're carrying that on, and we're still evolving it ourselves, you know, which is yeah. the cool thing. And I really like what you said about doing it to different types of music, because I think that's so true with locking. Like, you know, I I was a popper first, so I'm aware that like people pop to different types of music all the time, and that's really evolved the style. You know, the style has evolved so much because of the music changes, and like I haven't seen that quite as much with locking and personally I love locking on hip-hop and I love yeah. locking on trap music and like different genres because I feel like it brings new things out all the time you know it does. Uh, me personally I, I do I love I, I absolutely I love hip-hop music I like house music um, I do music myself mm. uh, yeah. You know, I, I listen to all types of music, and I, I think, I think that's really crucial to uh, the development of uh, of lock. And not only that, it's something that's done like super fast too, because mm. that can just, you know, it can be too much. Um, it's it, it's a beautiful thing when you're actually allowed to see what's going on. Also. Yeah. You know, but there is something cool about, you know, fast movements, but all the battles that are going on now is to music on 120 BPM yeah. or above. And it's just like, I, I mean, I, I think maybe 120 is slow. I think it's 130. And it's just like <laughs> super fast. They, You're just you like know, running through the my, movement. My, it, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like I mean, I, I think that's why I like doing it to hip hop, like is because it slows it down and you can really let the movement breathe. And that's something yeah. that I observe from you and Steen is like, and I don't know if that's something you guys were doing with the style yourselves is doing it on more hip hop. But I feel like you guys gave like a big, there was a lot of this in your style, like a lot of heavy groove yeah. to it. Like the Viva tape, like the way you guys are moving there is big and funky and like it's almost hip hop ish yeah but we we both like we we, we loved hip hop and we i mean we also we, we're not known as hip hop dancers but it's something that 
it's a style of dance that we also love doing. Mm. And this this heavy bounce that yeah. you see in old school hip hop, we we like to have that in locking as well mm. because the executions just look so like solid and it's 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 really in your face so yeah, yeah. you know i mean i enjoy that a lot too and also when i teach i'm not teaching to uh super fast music it it, it goes to this mm. uh slightly slower music or hip-hop for that yeah matter. yeah do you also um I mean, you do martial arts and you do a lot of house dance. Does that influence your locking in different ways too? Like mixing styles, do you do some of that? Yeah, I mean, doing uh, the, the first, uh, you know, other thing I did instead of dancing only was capoeira. Mm. Capoeira gave me a, a bigger range. Uh, it, gave me a, it gave me a better shape and control. So that was the first thing that, you know, you can, could consider being martial art. Uh, later in life, I got into uh, a, a system called Silat, which is um, a, a combat system from Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, in the Philippines, they do something called Kali Silat, Kali. And it really and truly who got me on to that was a guy called Tony McGregor from New York and Sekou Haru. They were doing it, and I just got intrigued, and I was like, wow, where can you learn this? And I ended up traveling out to these countries and, 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 and practicing, them, just like I would do with hip-hop. For me, it's just like hip-hop. You go out there, you learn yeah. skills, you bring it back home, and then you just train, 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 and mm -hmm. perfect it. Um, I also have a job on the side where this is a good tool. I work security, you know, and then I dance on the side. But what that gave me, is uh, it gave me a different control. It also gave me relaxed energy mm. or power mm. that um, is it's something that I never understood until later in life with Anthony, for example. When he moves, everything is super relaxed, but mm. it looks really hard. Right. So when I had to teach somebody, they would tense up and they were like, oh, yeah. oh, uh, like yeah. they, because they wanted to look make it look strong. And a lot of people, they connect strength with be intense, right. you know, but really and truly is you got to be relaxed and controlled. So that was very helpful mm. with, uh, especially the sea lot that I'm still, I'm still practicing these things. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think everything has a, has a huge influence on your development. Yeah. Sure. And also, you know, another thing that I want to uh, make sure that I say out loud mm. is that you know, bringing us out in 2010 was, um, it was, it was a different experience, but it was so refreshing mm. to meet somebody like you and Rashad that had a huge interest in this. That you yeah. guys were really, really interested in this. Yeah. And I think that kind of, you know, it just goes to show that everybody needs everybody because I don't believe that if that didn't happen, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't lock ever again. Right. But I would not really like, okay, put my focus there. Right. But because of the interest of someone else, it's like, okay, then you gotta, okay, what was it really that I was doing? You know, and then yeah. you, you, it, it kind of sparked things up again. So that was, right. I think that was really positive. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that because that was our hopeful goal. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we looked up to you guys so much, and we look up to you guys so much, and, you know, we feel connected to you guys in lineage and movement, and we just want to carry that thing on. And, you know, Junius's idea and our mission as a group is to, you know, recognize people that are, you know, worth recognizing and maybe don't get as much attention or they're not as known, so... For us, it was just a part of what we do. We were like, this is, we got to make this happen, you know? And I'm really glad that we did because we've been building consistently since. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job. I mean, I'm really proud of you guys, what you guys do. It's, it's, it's really awesome to see. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy yeah. when, it, when you guys are posting videos <laughs> of the show. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's cool, man. I, should, I never thought about doing that. <laughs> That's that's beautiful. It, it, it's really cool. It's yeah. Really cool. Yep. So yeah. 
there's more more to come. Yeah, really good things from here. And I'm also I'm I'm really hoping to to come over again. It's like last week I was talking with Julius about coming over uh, this year, but I don't know if it will happen exactly the time frame that I proposed. But you know, we I make sure that I come over so we can build some more yeah. support. For sure, man. <laughs> But yeah, that's a that's all I got for for questions. If there's like nothing else that you really wanted to mention, then that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm glad I'm glad uh, that that we're doing this because I mean, uh, I'm not really putting myself out there as much as I could. Also, yeah. So you know, that's a part of you know people not knowing about me. You know, I feel. I feel like I did that a lot when I was uh, a bit younger, mm. but it, it's 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 always a great feeling to share, yeah. um, and I, I also do that when I teach out here. It's, uh, it's something I really really enjoy, and I hope to you know, come out and and have an impact on this style still. You know, yeah. as long as I'm in good shape and I feel like moving, it's definitely a part of my mission. So um, for people who Who's listening to this or looking at this? You know, you can, um, yeah, you can just contact me. You know, I still, I still do my thing, and I'm interested in sharing. So, nice. Let me know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate uh, you spending the time and sharing your your story and your experience with us. Yep. Yeah, you're welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I really.